My opinion is that the more I read about vitamin K, um, the more I can't believe that it's uh, injected into newborn infants. And that um, if you look at my, my, my scientific uh, endeavors have really shown me that by and large, nature on overall didn't make mistakes like this. Nature didn't leave out uh, vitamin K from babies, and that until babies are six months old, they're not actually having a full coagulation, normal coagulation. So there's a reason, just like babies are programmed to be anti-inflammatory, I believe that babies are programmed to not have uh, numerously higher levels of coagulation than adults. Um, also, if you look at the coagulation uh, supposed deficits that a baby has, it's not just the vitamin K factors. So I would suggest that you read um, a lot about it and, and consider uh, if, if, you, if you feel better about giving it, then only give the drops. But most people I know who understand the difference don't give any at all. And if you do give it, maybe it would just be if there was a, an extremely traumatic birth. But um, you have to understand some of the things that medical interventions do at birth. For instance, um, when the baby is born, what happens is it, it's a very tight passageway, as we all know. And so the baby is squeezed very tightly. The, 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 the brain, I'm sorry, the, the cranium is made so that it can compact in on itself. The brain is squeezed. There's trauma all throughout the body. About 30% of babies will have micro hemorrhages from a normal delivery. Now, afterwards, in most societies, that cord is clamped right away, which is a problem because you're leave, not only leaving behind up to 40% of that baby's blood that belongs to that baby, but you're also leaving behind stem cells, which have the potential to go in and clear up any of the problems that happened in the brain or elsewhere. Now, if you thicken the blood, what is it, 2,000 times more or something like that? Then how is that going to affect the ability for those stem cells to go where they need to go? If you're, when you, when you, you have these vitamin K factors, those areas that bleed tend to clot, and it's a little harder to clear that out than if you just leave it that way. The concern is always the minority, this vast, vastly small percentage of children uh, who can develop an intracranial hemorrhage and it can be problematic. Uh, so, so we're now treating everybody for this problem. Uh, so I think it's important to understand the full spectrum uh, before agreeing to the uh, injection. And it should be your personal decision that you feel comfortable with after knowing what there is to be known about vitamin K, which I believe in the USA has been given since the 1970s, something like that. But before that, we weren't giving it. The other thing is that if the baby's clotting is uh, not full until six months of age, how long is your injection going to work for? So it's not completely logical that giving a huge injection on the first day of life is going to protect them over the long term. But I think that it's always a good idea for mothers to consume lots of, green, lots of greens during the entire pregnancy if possible, because not only do you get vitamin K that can be delivered to the baby in normal amounts if they need it, uh, but you're also getting folic acid and magnesium and lots of other minerals that are required to build a baby. Thank you.